morning. Very big welcome to all of you here this morning. Also, our, our online church. Great to have everyone with us. Let's stand. We're going to have an awesome time of worship. Let's close our eyes. Lord God, we standing here today, we're coming with an expectation. An expectation of, of your promises that are being fulfilled of you doing a good work in our lives that you know don't leave us and you don't forsake us yes we're just standing in faith this morning god thank you that you you never let go that what you've started that your promises remain true thank you that you are everlasting lift our our hands and our voices to you this morning Amen. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God.
Thank you, Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Thank you that you sit on the throne forever, God. Thank you that you have overcome. We praise you this morning, God. You're holy. You're so worthy. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Holy. Cry out, hallelujah. Hallelujah to you.
of kings You are my everything And I will adore you Oh, I'll adore you I'll adore you Jesus, you tore the veil. Thank you that we can step up, step into the throne room. And we can kneel down in the presence of God. Thank you that you made a way. Thank you, Jesus. You are here.
Yes, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your grace in this place. Father, we thank you that you are the way maker. You are the miracle worker in our lives. And you just have such abundant thoughts about us, such abundant grace in your heart towards us. Father, I thank you for... Not just who you are in our lives and for how we can relax in your presence knowing that all judgment has been taken away from us father onto that cross and that we can walk in that sense of freedom lord thank you lord, that the resources of heaven are are here lord in this place available lord to to come and receive and just drink from what you have for us and father i thank you this morning as we worship together we listen to the word Lord, that you just influence our hearts with your goodness, your kindness, your favor. Lord, I thank you even as Yonu is preaching this morning, that Lord, you just open our hearts to the message of your, your love and grace and favor towards us. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you are doing in our midst. We appreciate you, Jesus. We bless you. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We are so excited. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for everybody that's watching online. If it's maybe your first time watching online, then we want to welcome you, and you, we know you're going to enjoy the service with us. If, you're, if it's your first time being a guest with us, then we want to really welcome you to the Nisner Vineyard family. If you were here once, then you are part of the family. <laughs> and so just put up your hand if you are here for the first time. Some young, amazing people sitting here. We're going to just put a gift in your hand. Keep your hand up. Just keep your hand up until somebody gets to you. They just want to bless you and say, welcome, and uh, we are so glad that you are here with us. Yeah, that's awesome. So this morning, I'm just going to read an offering scripture for us and uh, just talk about it for a few minutes. It says in Luke 16, verse 11, If therefore you have not been faithful with the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you the true riches? And so this scripture has condemned me for many years, thinking, oh, I need to be more faithful, I need to be more faithful. It's like that never-ending taskmaster somewhere that we in our own hearts believe is telling us, be faithful, be faithful. And it's like you never mount up to that faithfulness. And then at a stage, the Lord started speaking to me about faithfulness. And he just said to me, Alfred, faithfulness is not tithing to the scent, being perfect in everything you do, handling your, your, your finances with with a kind of a law-keeping mentality. He said to me, faithfulness is just what the word says, being full of faith. Faithful, full of faith. And the Lord started speaking to me about how to fill your financial world up with faith. And so I started liberating my heart in the area of finances. And so in, in Proverbs 11, it speaks about the liberal soul shall be made fat. And so your, your soul needs to be fat. It needs to be flourishing. And some of our souls have become dry and and it, it's like our souls are, are cringing and it's like we're struggling to give because we believe sometime it's going to run out. And I've got good news for you. In God's kingdom, resources don't run out. You, it doesn't. You can keep on giving and keep on trusting God for more and more and have an abundant soul, have an abundant heart. And that is our heart for you, you know, that 
that we shouldn't be here in church to go like, we need to give because the church needs it. That's not the point. We need to give because we need it. <laughs> we need to give because our hearts need that liberating effect of the gospel. And so I've done that many times. As, my, as, as, the, as that, that feeling of not wanting to give comes into my heart, I will, just, I will break my heart and just give more. Just to tell my heart that you are not going to tell me that I'm my own provider. God is my provider and God's your provider. So if you want to give to Nisner Vineyard, there's many ways. You can look at your pamphlet and on the website. And then it's, uh, we're just so thankful for everyone that gives. But keep your heart full of faith. Be faithful, full of faith in the area of finances. This morning we're not going to watch um, uh, the, the announcement video, but we're going to watch uh, the announcements all on your, on your um, pamphlet. And it's on the website, but we're going to watch a video concerning our life groups. And we're also going to watch uh, the GLS video. And Jan is going to speak to us more about that. But it's going to be awesome. So uh, we, we're just uh, excited with you this morning for what God is doing. The, the GLS is coming up. So many good things. It's a new season, fresh season. So let's enjoy it together. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Hello, I'm Lafni. And my name is Tanya. We get together Thursday nights at half past six in Upper Central. And we would love to, for you to join us and we would welcome you into our home where we can grow together and um, grow in the knowledge of God and everybody's welcome. Yeah, come and join us. Hi everyone, my name is Mary Ann and we have our life group on Teeson Island on a Wednesday evening at 7. We are not exclusive and everybody is welcome to come. We are a very caring, prayerful, loving group. People know that they're safe and that whatever they share will be kept inside those walls. We do also have a lot of fun and laughter. We just want to encourage friendship and sharing. Our doors are always open and we would love anybody to come and join us and check us out. Hope we'll see you soon. In order to have growth, we must be able to endure a little bit of chaos. We are defined by how we treat each other. In my experience, the hard truth is that break to work takes time. From leaders, what can I do to help the people in my community that I minister to or the people in my organization who are struggling with these mental health issues. Grab a new light bulb, go back outside and fix it. Keystone habits are powerful when they involve values and emotions and talking about what we care about the most. That you must authentically engage enough with your teams that you can then invite them into the conversation by name. And I can remember the Lord saying, how can you sit here and do nothing? Behind every face is a story, a sorrow, and a spirit to keep going. Every executive in every country, everywhere, is talking about the return to the office, the next normal. The crisis may cause you to fear, but you cannot quit. Creativity is the ability to adopt the change and to create it. of social risk-taking is what leaders have to do. Don't you dare quit! Don't you dare give up!
Well, good morning, everybody. Wonderful to see you. We are so thankful that we can allow 250 people now. Praise God. We've prayed for that for a, for a long time and wonderful. It's so wonderful that we get to do that again. So great to have you all in church today. I just want to mention GLS. I want to encourage you to please sign up um, at the iDesk after the service. We're going to start with it in October, the second week. Um, on Wednesday evenings, so it will be 100 rand per evening or 400 rand for all four evenings. It will also include food, and you will really benefit from it. You know, they define leadership as influence, and everyone has influence. So you are a leader, you have influence, and I believe you will really enjoy GLA. So please sign up for that. We also have sponsors available, and if you can't afford it, we don't want you to miss out on GLA. So please speak to us. And then Pastor Steve and Mama D are not here this morning. They attended the Vineyard South Africa National Conference in PE this past week. They also ministered there. Pastor Steve shared a great message on vision last night, and Mama D ministered the, the night before. So if you want to go listen to that, you can go onto YouTube and under the page Vineyard South Africa, you can get that, and I think you will really enjoy it. Um, but they are still there. They're coming back today, but they send their greetings um, and love to you all. Excuse me, but we are going to continue to, to bloom this morning, and I hope you've enjoyed the series so far. I think it's a timely word for us. We have a new season too, and God wants us to bloom in life. I think we were all encouraged by Alfred last week, and we were reminded that we live under a much more covenant. And as I listened to him, I just thought, you know, if we live under this awesome covenant, it should actually be hard not to bloom. I think sometimes we have this mentality that it's, it's tough to prosper in, in this challenging world and with everything that's happening, but man, with God's ability working in and through us and, you know, with the fact that we live under this new covenant based on better promises and the fact that it's a much more covenant, we should bloom much more as well, much more than people did under the old covenant. Amen. And this is really something I am passionate about. The last few months I've been meditating on, on fruitfulness too. And that is what blooming is all about for me, is living a fruitful life. And I don't know about you, but I want to live a fruitful life. Not for myself, but so that I can advance the kingdom of God, so that I can do what God has called me to do, so that I can allow Him to live through me and flow through me. And, and you know, God didn't create any one of us to be mediocre, to live mediocre lives. You know, Jesus came to give us an abundant life, and He wants all of us to bloom. And this morning, I just want to share four keys with you that I believe will help you to bloom in life. These are four keys that I have seen in the Word. By the grace of God, I've tried to apply them in my own life, and I really believe it will produce greater fruitfulness in your life too. So the first key I want to share with you is simply to know the will of God. And I want to show you from Scripture that it is God's will for us to bloom, you know, He empowered us to bloom. He wants us to bloom more than we do. But then I also want to show you as we follow God's specific will, the specific unique will that He has for each one of us, He has a calling for each one of us. And as we follow that, it will also effortlessly produce blooming, fruitfulness in our lives. But let's go to the very first chapter of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1. And he says, it says, God blessed them, prosper, reproduce, fill earth, take charge. And these were the very first words that mankind heard from God. And God's first words to mankind were blessing and empowerment for fruitfulness, for blooming in life. And some of you might listen to that and think, well, that's awesome, Yanu, but, but didn't God say that before sin entered the world? Wasn't that his will and then he changed after mankind messed it up? But let's read Genesis 9 verse 1. Because here God speaks to Noah after the flood and after sin already entered the world. And it says, God blessed Noah and his sons. He said, prosper, reproduce, fill the earth. He said the exact same thing to Noah, you know, than he did to, to Adam. And this shows us that after mankind messed up by sinning, it didn't change God's will and desire for us to bloom in life. And see, God's will for us also doesn't change after we experience a setback, or after we go through a challenge. And maybe many of you have experienced setbacks, maybe in your relationships, maybe in your business, especially with COVID and lockdown, but, but God's will for you is still the same. And He still wants to empower you to, to bloom and to prosper in life. 
He wants it for you more than you do. And Jesus also said in John 15 verse 8, when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. So he's not saying we should produce great fruit and then we become his disciple. He's simply saying if we are his true disciple, we will effortlessly produce much fruit in life. But then he also says it will bring great glory to our Father. See, it glorifies God when we live a fruitful life, when we bloom in life. And Jesus wants us to bloom. It's his will for us. But then when it comes to God's specific will, Paul prayed this in Colossians 1, verse 9 to 10 to, to the Colossians. And he says there, so we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. I don't know about you, but, but when I pray, I don't want to just pray religious prayers. I don't want to just pray for the sake of praying. I want to pray in line with the word, and I want to pray prayers that God will answer. And if we want to pray that way, we need to look at the way Paul prayed. Because Paul never prayed a prayer that, that God wouldn't answer, or that wasn't a relevant prayer for new covenant believers. And one of the things that he, that he prays for, for new covenant believers here is he is asking God to fill them with complete knowledge of his will. And then in verse 10, we see the result of an answer to that prayer. And it says, Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. When your life produces every kind of good fruit, you are going to bloom in life. And then he says, All the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. So we see here that, that knowing and discovering and, and fulfilling God's will is also not a one-time event. Because Paul prayed this for believers that were already born again, already spirit-filled, and yet he asked God to fill them with complete knowledge of his will. Paul also said in Ephesians 5 verse 17, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now I've seen two extremes when it comes to the will of God. And the first one is where people say God is mysterious and his will is mysterious. And we can never really know what, what the will of God is. And you know, that is not true. I'm not saying that we will know everything there is to know. The Bible says we know in part. And God definitely works in surprising ways. I mean, he has surprised me many times in the way that he provided for me, in the way that he guided me. But God doesn't work in, in mysterious ways. If God works in mysterious ways, why did he reveal himself through his eternal names in the old covenant? Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Tzitkanu. See, God revealed himself even in the Old Testament. And then Jesus came, who was the perfect representation of God the Father. And then God gave us the Holy Spirit and his word. So God is not hiding himself or his will from us. He wants us to discover it. And if you have a desire to know his will for your life, to know his will concerning a situation, you can ask him, like Paul did in Colossians 1. But then the other extreme is where people think there is never a need to ask God for his will. You know, Christians who think we can just do what we want to do, when we want to do it, how we want to do it. But we are, not, we are also not Lord of our own lives. You know, we still need to follow Jesus as our Lord, as our Master. And in the book of Acts, we see how the Holy Spirit constantly led the disciples. You know, go over to the house of Cornelius and minister the gospel. Don't preach the gospel in this town. We are going to reject you. So we can still trust God for His specific will. And the good news is when we follow His specific will, when we follow His guidance in life, it will produce all kinds of good fruit. So his general will, his desire for us is to bloom. He empowered us to bloom. And when we follow his leading, we will also bloom. So it's going to be very hard for us not to bloom if we know the will of God. Amen? So don't be unwise, but understand this will, ask for it, and you will bloom in life. Then the second key I want to give you is abide in the vine. Abide in Jesus and in his word. In John 15, verse 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. You abides in me, and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, 
you can do just a little bit. Nothing. You can do no, we can do nothing without Jesus. What a humbling statement. So we need Jesus. We need to abide in him if we want to bloom in life. And see, Jesus always, always abides in us as believers. But we also need to abide in him because this is not something that automatically happens after we get born again. If it was, every born again believer would always bloom. But I mean, to be honest, sometimes it's quite tough to see the difference between some believers and unbelievers. And yet they are believers, they are born again, they are on their way to heaven, but they're not necessarily blooming. And one of the things that will help us to bloom in life is to abide in Jesus, to abide in Him by having fellowship with Him and by prioritizing our relationship with God. In 1 Corinthians 1.9, the Apostle Paul also said, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now we just said, you know, that God does have a specific calling for each one of us, and as we follow that, we will bloom. But we will only bloom in that if we abide in this first calling. And that calling is to have fellowship with Jesus, to abide in Him. See, success in life comes from having a vibrant relationship with God and prioritizing that over everything else. Andrea was telling us this week, she's the children's ministry leader at our church. She said one of the children went up to Keats Vine last week and she got there and she said, you know, I've made up my own scripture. And, and Andrea said she thought, oh, because usually when you, when you get a comment like that, you get ready for a quote out of a book of visitations. So, so Andrea was anticipating that, and, and then this girl said, my scripture is, if you stay close to Jesus, you will prosper in everything. Hey, how awesome is that? That is not a quote out of hesitations. That's a quote that's in line with the word of God. See, we need to abide in Jesus by having fellowship with him, by having friendship with him. And Jesus said, when we do, we will bear much fruit. And abiding in Jesus also means we abide in his word. Jesus said in John 8, 31, verse 30 to 32, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, notice it's Jews who already believed him, not unbelievers. He said to them, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But abiding here means to permanently dwell. It's not just visiting. And I think many times we, we visit the word, but we need to dwell in it. We need to live by it, by making it final authority in our lives, by making sure it, it dwells richly in our hearts and meditating on it. And, and Psalms chapter one is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, blessed is the man. And the Afrikaans said it, wel gelukzalig. And wel gelukzalig is wanneer jy so gesient is, jy kan nie net sê jy is gesient nie. Jy is wel gelukzalig. It says here, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, the word of the Lord. And in his law, in his word, he meditates day and night. He abides in it. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does, shall prosper. The Passion Translation renders this free as he is never dry, never fainting, ever blessed, ever prosperous. And I think the last two weeks we were reminded again that the Springboks can bloom in some seasons, but not in every season. But you know, I'm so glad that as, as believers, as children of God, when we abide in him and we abide in his word, we can bloom in every season of life. You know, even when we experience a setback, even when we go through a challenge, we can continue to be fruitful. So let's abide in Jesus, let's abide in His Word, and let's bloom in life. Then the third key I want to give you today, and if you forget everything that I share with you today, don't forget this one. And the third key I want to give to you is leave the past behind. Robin Sharma said, your past is a place to be learned from, not a home to be lived in. And, you know, I think we hear this so often in, in Christian circles, at, in church and at conferences, leave a past behind. But this is really something that we need to start applying if we want to be fruitful 
if we want to bloom in life. And I want us to look at the life of Joseph and, and just learn from his example. And I think if there ever was a man who had a right to say life is not fair, it was Joseph. You know, Joseph grew up, was a faithful man, and he had some older brothers who were very jealous of him. They, they, they threw him into a pit and then sold him into slavery. And then Joseph started to work for a master named Potiphar, and he started to get promoted because he was faithful, he did his job well. And then the wife of Potiphar, you know, had a thing for Joseph and fabricated false charges against him, lied about him, and Joseph got thrown in prison. Now you would think, you know, one setback is enough, but he faced another setback here. He got thrown into prison, yet he was innocent. But Joseph just continued to be fruitful and to prosper. Even in prison, he got elevated, and eventually he got asked to go and interpret a dream for Pharaoh, and he just continued to be elevated, even though he faced so many challenges. And you know, it's, it's amazing. In Genesis, we read over and over that the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, despite all of his challenges. But I believe we find a great key in Genesis 41 that shows us why Joseph continued to bloom in life. And in Genesis 41, verse 50 to 51, it says, During this time, before the first of the famine years, two sons were born to Joseph and his wife. Joseph named his older son Manasseh, for he said, God has made me forget all my troubles and everyone in my father's family. So the name Manasseh means to forget, to let go. And then verse 52, Joseph named his second son Ephraim, for he said, God has made me fruitful in this land of my grief. So Ephraim means to be fruitful. But notice which one came first here. Joseph first said, you know, he called his first son Manasseh. It means to forget, to let go. And then Ephraim, which is fruitful. See, fruitfulness will never precede leaving the past behind. And I believe this is why Joseph just continued to be elevated and why he continued to bloom in life. And I love how he said that God made me forget my past. And he didn't mean God made me in the sense that God forced him. He just meant God helped me to do it. And maybe some of you are sitting here today and you have terrible pasts. You experienced so much hurt in it and disappointment, and because it was so bad, it's tough for you to leave it behind. But God will also help you, just like he did Joseph. God is faithful to help us with that, and he wants us to let go. But you need to choose today, and maybe you were also thrown into a pit, not a physical pit, but a pit of despair, a pit of hurt, and a pit of disappointment because of what people did to you. But you can also choose to let go. Choose to have a Manasseh. See, we, we, we all desire Ephraim, to have an Ephraim, to, to be fruitful. But we need to have a Manasseh first. Let go. Leave a past behind. And leaving the past behind doesn't mean that we lose the ability to recall what happened. But it means that it doesn't have an influence on us anymore. So let's choose to let go. And I think a major lesson from Joseph's life is that other people... Don't write your narrative, the story of your life, if you don't let them. Regardless of what they did to you, and regardless of what you experienced, you can choose to let go. And, and I think one of the things that, that we need to let go, and that I want to encourage you to let go of, is a victim mentality. You know, so often in my conversations with people, I, I can pick up that one of the excuses we use often for not being fruitful and for not blooming in life is our past. You know, what our family did to us and what we didn't get through our family and from our family. And, but you know, let's let go of that victim mentality. I actually wanted to call this third key, no more excuses. Let's choose no more excuses. We are going to bloom in life. And I want to share this with you, something that I, that I discovered recently. And, and please hear my heart, fruitfulness and blooming is, is not just about money, but Dave Ramsey and his team did a study on, on 10,000 millionaires in America recently. It's apparently the biggest study ever done on, on, on millionaires. And this is one of the, the things that they found by doing this study, and that is that 79% of millionaires 
did not receive any inheritance at all from their parents or other family members. So 79% of these people were not born into the right family. They didn't become successful just because their family, you know, was successful. They chose to bloom despite where they came from. And I think this is true in other areas of life too. You know, we can bloom. This proves that we can bloom in any area, regardless of our past, regardless of our family. You know, let's choose to leave a past behind. Isaiah 43 verse 18 says, forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. If we are going to continue to go over old history, it's going to derail us in life. We won't bloom in the way that God wants us to bloom. And then the Apostle Paul also said in Philippians 3 verse 13 in the New Covenant, No, dear brothers, and sisters, one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. You see, Joseph had to forgive other people. Paul had to forgive himself and for everything that he did to Christians in persecuting them. But whether it's other people, whether it's ourselves, sometimes it's even harder to, to forgive ourselves and for what we did to others, but we need to leave it behind if we want to have that Ephraim, if we want to be fruitful. And I want to share a quote with you by Craig Moore, which I believe is a great key in, in leaving the past behind. Craig Moore said this, he said, the key to forgiving others, or we could say forgiving ourselves, and getting past your hurts and disappointments is to value the cross greater than your pain and loss. Well, what are you valuing today? Are you still valuing your, your past and how bad it was? And maybe it was bad, but what Jesus did for you on the cross is more powerful. You just need to choose to value the cross more. And you'll get over it, you'll be able to leave it behind, and you will be fruitful. So let's leave a past behind. Let's value the cross, and let's bloom in life. Amen? Amen. And then the last key I want to share with you today, that I believe will help you to live a fruitful life and to bloom in life, is to be a team player. You know, we are part of a, the body of Christ, and the body of Christ is a team. It's not an individual game. And something I love about Pastor Steve and Mama D and just the culture that they have created here at Nysna Vineyard is it's really a team culture. You know, they are always quick to talk about the team. They are always quick to give credit to the team. And Pastor Steve has said many times, if you have an individual independent spirit, you won't last at Nysna Vineyard because the culture is a team culture. But see, when we, when we are a team player, we will prosper too in our relationships, but also in other areas. We need to choose to be a team player. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9 to 10 says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. I pity you if you have an individual independent spirit. You need to be a team player. Ephesians 4 verse 16 says, It makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. So that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Listen, listen to those words. Healthy and growing and full of love. Does, does it sound like blooming? That is blooming. The body of Christ blo blooming. What will cause it to bloom? If each part does its own special work, and be a team player. Then we will bloom together. So be a team player. And I want to encourage you today, I think one of the best places where we can be a team player is a church, where we are together as, as the body of Christ. And if you are not a member of Nysna Vineyard, I want to encourage you to prayerfully consider becoming a member. And if you are a member, or if you become a member here, yeah, it, it doesn't mean that you now have voting rights, so we are going to control you. But it just shows us too that you believe this is your church home, the church home that God has for you, and you want to be a team player here. If you're not part of a life group, why don't you join one? It's a great way to develop healthy relationships with other people, to be a team player. Why don't you join a serve team? What a great way to become part of a team and to serve the team, the body of Christ. You see, we also never graduate from serving, from being a servant. 
Some people have this mentality, if I achieve this or if I reach this, then I don't have to serve anymore. Well, if Jesus, the Son of God, said I came not to serve, or not to be served, but to serve, then we need to have that mentality too. But be a team player. Be a team player in your marriage. Be a team player at work. Be a team player at church. And it will help you to bloom in life. We all like to do things our way sometimes, our own way, but that is not God's heart for us. And God didn't create us to do life alone. That's why we are part of a body, the team that Jesus has for us. And then I just want to read some quotes to you here. This is an African proverb. It says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. If you want to bloom and you want to go far, be a team player. Mother Teresa said, I can do things you cannot. You can do things I cannot. Together, we can do great things. So let's be a team player and let's do great things in life. Let's bloom in life. So I want to encourage you today to know the will of God, to know that he desires for you to bloom more than you do, to abide in the vine and in his word, to choose to leave a past behind and to be a team player. And if you do that, you will bloom like you've never bloomed before. Let go of disappointments and setbacks that you might have experienced in the last year or two. Look to the future and be expectant. The best is yet to come. Hey, the best is yet to come for all of us. So let's bloom in life. Amen. Amen. Can I ask you just to stand for a moment? And as you stand, I want to encourage you to just take a moment and just reflect on, on what has been shared. I want to ask you just to close your eyes, just to focus on the Lord. And, and maybe something was just highlighted to you this morning. Maybe one of the keys or one of the scriptures and I just want to ask you to close your eyes now, just to focus on the Lord. And then if you have never received Jesus into your life, if you want to abide in Him, you first need to ask Him to come and abide in you. And He is so willing. He wants you to invite Him into your life. If you've never received Him as your Savior, and if you've never made Him the Lord of your life, I want to give you an opportunity to do that right now. I want to lead you into a prayer. If that is you today, just raise your hand. If there's anyone that wants to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior for the very first time, please raise your hand. We just want to celebrate with you and pray with you. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage everyone watching online too, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you can pray with us now too. So I'm going to ask all of you just to pray with those who raised their hands those who wanted to, and let's just say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me on the cross. Thank you for paying for my sin. I want to receive you today as my Lord and Savior. I want you to abide in me, and I want to abide in you. I want to belong to you. In Jesus' name. And then I just want to give you an opportunity now. If, if you want to leave a past behind, I just want you to raise your hand. Just as an act of faith and say, I want to leave a past behind. Thank you so much. I just want to pray over you. Thank you so much. Because remember what Joseph said. He didn't say in my own strength, I, I let go of a past. No, God helped him to do it. And God wants to help you too. But if you feel like your past still has an influence on you, if you are still struggling with a victim mentality, God wants to deliver you from that. He wants you to, to have an Abraham, to experience fruitfulness. So thank you so much. Thank you for those hands. I just want to pray over you and agree with you. Father, I thank you for those hands. I thank you, Lord, that we can choose to value the cross today. Thank you, Lord, that this doesn't have to be a long process or a journey. We can choose today, by your help, to leave a past behind and to value the cross and to bloom in life. Lord, thank you that as you helped Joseph, you help us today to do this. We leave a past behind. We look forward, Lord. We value the cross. We are not going to make excuses anymore. Thank you, Lord, for empowering us to be fruitful. I thank you, Lord, that people who raised their hands now will experience freedom. 
that their past won't have an influence on them anymore. Thank you, Lord, that they will be fruitful to a greater degree, that they will bloom like they've never bloomed in life before for your glory. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. If you need ministry today, if you want someone to pray with you, agree with you in prayer, please go to our ministry team at the corner there on my right, your left. They would love to pray with you. We have an awesome team there waiting for you. Thank you so much for coming to church today. Remember, God wants you to bloom more than you want to bloom. And also remember, you are highly favored and deeply loved.